Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the Death Claw from Fallout Wasteland Warfare by Modifius. I'm really excited to get into this core box here and to start things off we have Dark Sand. This is just for like the underside of him, kind of the belly and all that. Um, he's already been primed in gray. He was trimmed a little bit, but not too much. It wasn't even worth showing would have been really short here. Just kind of one scene as I skip around here. Um, so as you can see right now, I'm being careful. But what I end up doing is actually pretty much covering the whole mini in this dark sand. And the reason is, see, now I'm not doing the underside. Um, I, I want a kind of a lighter base coat because if you look at the death claws, they have like a lighter skin, which isn't this, by the way, but I'm just going to use this for now. Uh, it'll pick out the, the recesses a lot better when I add the darker color. And then like these darker kind of more armored plates on them. Uh, and, and so I'm going to pretty much just base coat them in this. So if you have a, a, a skin colored prime, uh, uh, that's a little close to this, you may as well do that. Um, but then you'd still need to do the belly and stuff. So next I have leather brown. And what I'm going to do here is very, with a heavy brush, very loosely, uh, quote unquote dry brush. I'm using a dry brush. I'm using the same technique, but it's a much more loaded brush. So it's painting a lot more of it, about 90% of it. And what I'm trying to do here is, is actually, in fact, I've, I've watered it down and you can tell it's pretty thin. Just try and get a sense of where I want the colors to go. Uh, so, and what's nice about painting anything organic like this, um, is you can be really loose. You can just kind of play around with it. It's kind of like distressing armor or weathering armor where the more colors you put on it and the rougher you make it look, ideally the better it looks at the end. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of trying to see where I want the colors. I'm testing whether I want it on his inner arms or not. Um, I realize in the game that they're, uh, they're much more colored on their, you know, belly and under the arms and they have like the spackle. I'm not going to worry too much about the, the splotches of color there. I'm just trying to, I guess, paint in by numbers kind of the, the general areas I want, uh, dark. There are some things like the ends of the feet and the ends of the hands I know are going to be the pure color. They don't need any, um, anything else there. Uh, they're just going to be much darker in general because they're f really far away from the, uh, the stomach. So I'm taking that same color and I'm just actually painting it on now with a brush, being careful around the claws. Claws are gonna... So in actuality, I'm gonna end up painting the claws uh, dark sand uh, as well, um, and then kind of you know, washing it down and doing some stuff with it. So when you had the color, you could have done that, but then you would have had to, you know, you might have to touch it up. It It's easy enough to whip out at, at the end, especially with a wet palette. So I'm going to finish painting up this, kind of his back scales and all that, and then we'll get to the next color.
All right, so now I have chocolate brown. This is, again, a much darker color. Well, not, I guess, a much darker color. It's just enough to where I can kind of paint it in on top, and it actually blends in fairly well, especially with how layered it is. Uh, on some spots, I come in after I'm done painting them, and I just do a second coat. Uh, it's dry definitely by the time I'm done, you know, with one pass through on them, so it can get a bit darker. Um, and really, this is kind of the the main scale color I've chosen. I've, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of a darker one. So another interesting thing about Fallout, just in general, is, it, first of all, with Death Claws, they do tend to have kind of different color schemes, at least as far as I can tell with the different Death Claws and whatnot. But any Fallout has a filter on it, right? And sometimes it's just like all green, like in Fallout 3. Sometimes it seems like it's all orange, like Fallout 4, but then weathering effects and where you're at and the time of day and they do a lot of color changes. And so if you just search like Deathclaw Fallout 4 on a Google image search, you're going to see, well, first of all, some mods because there's got to be mods, but you're going to see a lot of different color variations on the Death Claws, which really means there are no mistakes either, which is kind of fun. It's a little liberating, actually. I was kind of worried about it at first, but then I actually just kind of embraced it and said, well, this is my Death Claw. This is how death, this Death Claw looks in mine. Now, if you get the creature expansion or the, you know, the pack with creatures, you get a second Death Claw. You could paint them different, and that'd be fine, too. Uh, it might be kind of cool. Maybe one's an alpha Death Claw or something like that. Um, so you'll see, like, I did this on the tail a little bit. I'm just doing these lines... Um, that is a great way to uh, simulate texture, especially if there's really fine texture there and you're not going to spend hours and hours and hours with a very small tipped brush just, you know, exacting it. You can just do these swipes, kind of like what I'm doing right there, and it gives that same illusion. It works great. I think it looks good at any distance, even up close. I think it still looks good um, because the details are so fine. But again, this is just me now going through with the actual dark color now that I've kind of painted it in and getting all the recesses out. And uh, I don't quite like um, the the upper arm. I actually leave that blended color. I'm not going to paint that in because I wanted that to be sort of a blend. All right, now we're on to Rhinox Hide. This is a very dark brown, and a gr I, I love this color. It's just a, a great deep brown, um, but it's not a black, which I think is really important. Sometimes you, if you get too dark, it, it just starts looking black, at least to me from far away. This is definitely a brown. It's just a dark brown. I'm getting all those little spikes he has everywhere. So I'm, I'm getting him on his back. I'm getting him on his arms. I'll get him on his legs, um, and then he even has some on his little shoulders there I'm going to get. And uh, just like any other fin, to make sure you get the both edges and then both sides, and that's really it. I'm also going to get his horns. Uh, this is again just a base coat. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna lighten them up, but just a little bit. They're they're still pretty dark here. All right, now I have oak brown, which is another dark brown, but it's a, it's a much more uh, red brown in there, and so you can you can really see in the highlight, and it just breaks it up enough visually that uh, I I really like it when it comes to highlighting something like uh, you know the rhinox hide that we used earlier. It just kind of makes the that go a little bit lighter. So like at the end of the the horns there, I think it'll look great at the top of the spikes. Um, and so it can be used to kind of shift the color a little bit if you lay it on heavy like this, or it can just be used as kind of a highlight, like uh, when the light's hitting and it's a little bit brighter. I'm also putting it around the base of all of the spikes here just to start blending it, and also because, again, this color variation makes it seem more organic and more real. So he's going to have these splotches of different colors. See, I'm even putting it a little bit in here with the blending, just trying to change that a little bit, but this is very watered down here. And all of that just kind of adds to the com visual complexity of them. Okay, now we're back with leather brown. And what I'm doing here is there's a big difference between the dark sand and now that oak brown. And so this is just painting in those really bright spots that, again, change the color. So now there's, you know, three or four different browns on him. And it makes it, it doesn't make it look splotchy. It makes it look really good, actually. But this makes it look a bit more organic in the shift between. I think it's closer to what they look like in the game itself. 
um, when it comes to their kind of under under armor on the top there and not like the bellies or whatnot. So I'm just kind of, I, again, I'm going to use it to blend a little bit, but otherwise I'm just painting in those bright spots. It's pretty much tracing at this point uh, that I got naturally from base coating it in such a bright color and then dry brushing on that darker red and then painting on even darker or that darker brown. All right, next we got some dark stone. It's a very, it's a very dark gray, um, but there might actually, I don't know. I feel like there's almost a little bit of brown in there. Uh, I have it a little bit too watered down here, so I had to do a second coat. You can kind of see the gray, um, but I want it, I wanted it dark because right here, I'm going to have a pool essentially off of the tongue, almost like a wash and into the recesses there on the bottom. Uh, so I would suggest actually watering it down like that and just doing two coats on the top. Next we have dark sand again. Like I said, we're going to do that on the, on the claws here, it's kind of the base coat. Uh, their, their claws are actually brighter than I remember. When I was looking up pictures, I noticed that uh, they're actually fairly bright. Not as bright as the uh, belly, but we're not done with the belly. I'm still going to highlight it, so it'll it'll still be visually different there. And we're going to darken the kind of the the roots. I don't know what you call it, the base part of the claws. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that with Seraphim Sepia. So this is just a little bit on my brush. I didn't water it down or anything, though you could. Uh, Seraphim Sepia is pretty light uh, anyway, a very kind of light brown, with a little bit of orange in there. Really good for a color like this. I'm just starting where I want it and then dragging it back to the end. It'll pull where it comes out of his skin, which is perfect. A tiny bit of dark red just for his tongue. Be careful. Use a good brush. Uh, I got my Windsor Newton there just to make sure that I got a really good... Um, tip there so I didn't splotch it everywhere. Light orange is a very bright orange. Um, however, it's still hard to see. If I were to do this again, I would put some kind of wash around his eyes to really s seep into the recesses there and then paint the light orange on top of that. Might pop him out a bit more. As it is, it's really close to the dark sand and so kind of hard to tell. But now we're highlighting the belly so I have buff out and it's a great color for this. You can paint it right on there. Again, it's pretty watered down. I'm just barely touching my brush with the tip, but just kind of highlighting again that belly area. So I'm not worried about the inside of the arms and just kind of the very basis of the inside of the leg, kind of where the body ends and the tail begins. And that's it. Oh, and the face, obviously. Now we have flat earth and we're just going to plop this down. So here's a predicament I had for a long time and you can follow this or you can not, it depends. This I'm going to do a wash and a dry wash on it, but it will not match the board you get perfectly. It'll be a little bit darker. The reason is, is because I want to try and a little bit future proof these. And so I want to kind of make it to where it fit into really anything. So this still fits in with the desert theme. It would also fit in with a forest theme. It'd be kind of dirt. It also fit in with a urban theme. It'd be as if, you know, like the, the concrete were removed and this is the dirt underneath. It's just right there in between once I get the dry brush on and all that to where I think it'll fit kind of wherever I put them, which I is what I prefer. What I hate is like if you have a jungle theme to mini base and then you put them in like a street, it just looks silly. So hopefully this will kind of tie all my, my minis together and regardless of the board I choose to play on, they'll kind of fit. Next is Uniform Gray, this is on the cement, and then I'm going to put the Seraphim Sepia. Uh, again, just it's a, it, it's a pretty heavy dosage of the Seraphim Sepia, but it's not that dark anyway. Uh, this is just to bring out that texture a little bit, and I'm going to do a very heavy dry brush. But I'm putting this on now before I paint the rocks and the tire and that kind of stuff because I want to uh, have time for this to dry. So now I have Nuln Oil out, and this is for the cement blocks to really just get into the cracks and to darken it a little bit. Um, I'm going to add a pretty heavy highlight, and then I'm going to go back over it again. Mechanic is standard gray for the rocks. If you have multiple grays, I would suggest using multiple grays for the rock versus cement, just so they look a little different. Um, but I'm going to do a, 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 
uh, these rocks are going to be a lot brighter. They're not as deep texture as I would like, uh, so the, they, they look very worn rocks by the time I'm done dry brushing, but that's fine. The scariest part of this is right here, the Abaddon black on this tire. Uh, just making sure you don't get it everywhere and ruin a paint job um, it is kind of nerve-wracking. So as you can see, I just slowly, you know, just let the my brush shape kind of do its work. And it, it works out fine. Just take your time. All right, so again, I wanted to kind of change it up a little bit, so let's do Agrax Earthshade. It's a very dark brown on the rock. It'll kind of make it a little bit more earthy, and again, it's not the Nolan oil, so it'll, it'll just look a little different anyway. And now we have Orange Brown, and this is a very heavy dry brush. Again, I want it to look... Um, I, 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 the texture isn't super strong here anyway, so you'd have to be very light any, anyway with a dry brush. But on top of that, uh, again, I wanted it to maybe look like sand, maybe look like dirt, just kind of be in between and really shift the color a lot. Okay, so I have Administratum Gray. This is heavily watered down. However, this is a very large jump from the Nolan Oil washed uh, uniform gray that we have here. And so it's going to look too bright. And that's fine, actually. So I do this sometimes. I'll over highlight and then put a wash over it and I'll bring it right down. It's really nice to do. It's kind of, it's, it's really quick to do. You don't have to worry so much about you know, the color change there. Again, I have lots of gray, so I'm just throwing different grays on there to try and change it up. Here's ash gray. It's another bright gray. It's pretty, it's pretty close to administratum gray, to be honest. And then I'm going to just do a heavy dry brush on those rocks and bring out that texture. Now I'm going to get mechanic standard gray out. Uh, it needs to be bright enough to see. A black gray would blend better, but that's fine. And I'm having to hand trace the detail here. Uh, trust me, a dry brush will not work. I tried it and I had to paint over it again. It's just too fine of a detail. The dry brush will not pick up on that. Uh, so you're either going to leave it black or you're going to do what I'm doing here. And that's uh, uh, just kind of painting in the tread lines. But I think it looks great, especially from tabletop distance. You can actually see it, which looks nice. All right, as I said, Nolan Oil again over the top. This is going to bring down that administratum gray and really blend it together so that the highlight doesn't look excessive and it looks fantastic, especially when you're looking at it from far away. It looks like it just belongs. Okay, so I kind of struggled here again on the rim. I chose Necromancer's Cloak. It's a medium dark brown or medium dark gray, I would say. But in my opinion, it seems to always... Maybe it's just me have a little bit of brown in it. I don't know. But either way, I think uh, I didn't want black. Um, that would stand out too much. And I think this will kind of fit in and, and look pretty neutral of a color. Okay, we're going to matte varnish it. So matte varnish it. And then add some happy little uh, grass tufts. I'm putting one in the, uh, in the tire here. I think it just looks kind of cool. First, I'm going to stick it to the side of the tire, because why not? I'm just dipping it in some PVA uh, glue right there, just some, you know, normal school glue, and where's glue kind of stuff. And then I want to put one here. I don't want to put too much. It is a wasteland after all, but maybe one near the rocks there as well. Break it up a little bit, and it'll look kind of nice. And that's it. That is the finished miniature. Guys, I hope you really liked him. I enjoyed painting him start to finish. He, again, when you're painting organic stuff or just stuff where it doesn't matter too much, it's really nice just to be able to paint and not care as much. It's really hard to make a mistake. Uh, the death claw will be your death claw. You can paint it however you want with whatever colors you want. It's it's pretty nice, and I can't wait to fight him. You know, if he if he spawns from a danger card or something like that, that's going to be crazy. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will be painting a lot more Fallout. I'm going to be reviewing it soon, as soon as I get more game time in. All that fun stuff. Uh, I want to thank all my patrons. They are awesome. You guys rock. You're amazing, and you make this channel possible. You are the driving force for me doing these, so thank you.